Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. Last weekend I went to visit my son and his family. Very good time with them. When I got back I thought, what can I make my grandson, who is about 18 months and a very active little boy? On the lathe, well, how about a BB rattle? I can do that. Well, no, he's 18 months, extremely active. A rattle is just not going to cut it with him. How about a ball? He likes balls. I can make a wooden ball, but he's going to throw a ball. And this one's going to be very, and a solid ball will be very heavy. So let's make a hollow ball. But add a little bit more interest by putting a small bell inside so that it will have some bell noise and some knocking noise. Probably won't roll straight, but that's okay too. And uh, it won't do any significant damage. I won't use a real fancy wood because he'll throw it, it might break. So that means that the ball in, the bell inside needs to be big enough that once he, put it in, he puts it in his mouth, which he will, it is big enough that he can't swallow it. So this is an inch and a quarter inch bell inside my hollow three inch ball. Let's make it. I'm starting with a smooth cylinder of cedar. Since this ball will be hollow, my first task is to cut a tenon on both ends. One end already has a tenon. I'm using my skew with a peeling cut. Then mark the end of my ball with my parting tool. Not too deep, as I don't want it to flex later. Next, I've measured the diameter of the wood. Then mark the same measure plus a quarter inch on the length of the cylinder. The extra is for the wood to be lost to cut and rejoin the halves. Then partially part the wood. Then mark the middle for where I will cut the ball in half. I've offset this cut by about a quarter inch to allow for the joint. To cut a ball, I'll first cut an octagon. I'm consulting with my chart of measures for the measure for the sides and distance from the end. I prefer my chart to a dedicated measuring tool. Then mark these measures on the cylinder. Then cut the cylinder at the mid mark with my parting tool. With the tailstock removed, I can cut completely through the wood. With the half ball still mounted to the chuck, I'll first hollow the interior while I still have the mass of wood on the exterior to dampen vibration. The risk is to cut too deep, so I'll stop and measure frequently. I'm starting with a spindle gouge, then switch to a round nose scraper. With hollowing complete, I'm cutting a small mortise to provide a gluing surface for rejoining the two halves. No sanding, as this will be sealed inside. Now that it is hollowed, I'm shaping the exterior first to the octagonal shape. The small end diameter and the slant length should be the same, while the last little portion should be about half the other two. I'm swapping the halves. Before hollowing, I need to cut a tenon to match the mortise on the other half. Since this will be glued, I'm not as picky with the result, but I still get a good tight fit. Then hollow this half similarly to the first, using a spindle gouge and a round nose scraper. Last, a little trim to shorten the tenon. Now to glue the two halves back together. I must not forget my one and a quarter inch bell to go inside. I'm not really afraid of gluing the bell since it is metal, but I am trying to minimize any squeeze out to the interior. 
With the glue dry, I'm finishing the octagonal shape. Now marking the center of each flat surface, then round over the corners of the octagon, but leave my mark. With this, I've approximated a sphere. With it now nearly a sphere, I can part off the ball. I'm still suffering from the effects of my move. I cannot locate my ball making faceplates. I found something for the headstock side that will fit my chuck, but for the tailstock I'm having to adapt. So I've turned a cylinder, drilled the hole to a depth matching my live center, then I've I'll cut a mortise to have it seat a little better and finally shape it to hold my ball. Back to work on the ball. I've turned the ball 90 degrees and have it cut between my newly hacked faceplates. With a small spindle gouge, I'm working on the ghost image to refine the sphere. I've switched to my skew to use as a scraper. Next, I'm marking a line on the equator and rotating the ball 90 degrees between the centers. And continue working down the ghost, but leaving the previous equator line. Three sets of this turning action should do the trick, but I needed four to get it smooth. With as much done with the tools as I can, I'm switching to sanding. Since this ball is for a baby, I'll finish it with a non-toxic finish, which also happens to be my sanding media, beeswax and mineral oil. I'm sanding each grit with the same three rotations as the cutting tools. Meanwhile, my hands feel smooth and soft and smell like honey. Blind Finishing a hollow ball is a risk of cutting through, but careful measurements on the outside do limit the risk. I do have some slight marks from my cup centers since I did not pad them, but this is still perfect for an 18 month old little boy. A three inch lightweight cedar wood ball with a bell inside for additional interest. For safety, the bell is too large to swallow if the ball is broken and the ball is finished with a non-toxic, renewable finish. I like it. I wonder if he will also. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. Please leave your comments. If you can find it, please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.